mentioned, but one of them. Um, but he had, he was recording it all on his VHS shoulder-mounted video camera. To tell you how again how far things have come. So he was trying to put together the. Um, Reconstruct the layout of the convention hall. So, thought it'd just be fun for nostalgia purposes, I guess, and to see where they started and such. And uh, the, uh, I don't know if you can tell, you probably can tell, but the uh, program was originally printed with a dot matrix printer, um, no laser printers then. Um, the, uh, yeah. The sigils on the front, I like traced over and drew by hand on a drafting board. So my dad's work. A hand-drawn map of downtown Fort Wayne. All the restaurants. Very, yeah, that was very important because people get hungry. I think there's actually more restaurants than there were now. Probably, that's probably true. The Grand Wing Center is expanded out. Taking over the whole block next to it. Some of them went under. Um, but yeah, I guess didn't really have a uh, outline for explaining anything. But I guess uh, uh, just to kind of give you a background on how we started the convention, we knew that there was a 10th uh, anniversary coming up. So it was the '93 that we started. Thinking about it, like somebody needs to do something for it because this has been this has been a major part of our lives, and we need to celebrate this, and other people need to know about it, you know. And um, we, uh, I was working at a uh, one of the few temporary jobs I had out of college. I was working in a factory doing computer stuff. And, uh, they had this office off to the side, kind of out in the plant that nobody used that much, and I think use that phone to call Hasbro and kind of make my contacts with them during normal business hours. And um, I don't remember exactly how I got through to them, but I started talking to uh, one of the uh, guys that, in the marketing department, his name is Carl Fritz. Um, he's moved on to other stuff since, but um, trying to convince him that, you know, a, tr a 10th anniversary for Transformers um, would be a good idea, and he actually got behind it. He jumped on the idea, but he had to try and convince the other people there that it was something worth pursuing. Um, one of the other people that he did get that was interested in it was Tom Bowman, who was also in the, uh, in the marketing. He could have been product design. I can't remember the exact titles now, but um, they uh, they they really. Um, went as much as they could, at least, because this was such a new thing that they hadn't ever been uh, exposed to. People want to do a convention for our toys. And they, they, are, they had the G.I. Joe show shows already, but that had, you know, a 30-year history. Or, it might have been 40 years by that point. Because it was started in 63. So, I mean, the... Collectors for Joe's had been around for a long time. The Transformers was still a, a new kid on the block, so to speak. And um, they they gave us their blessing to, to go ahead and pursue it. And they actually um, offered to be said, well, you want to do a toy? And we got these things because they were planning on uh, doing stuff in the second year of G2. And uh, they had some toys that they weren't going to run. They had planned it, but they canceled it. And so they sent us the set of the small carded stuff that comes protective bots and said, pick one. And so we picked Breakdown because it looked the coolest. And so then they, they made 300 of that one for giving out at the show. So well, that we did, although we didn't actually get all of those. Because they, right, they they, uh, they, they yeah. held some for them. So, let's see, there was there were a total of 300 made, which was 25 cases. We got 17 cases. They kept four cases for themselves for like family and whatnot. And uh, the other four cases went to FX95, which was run by Wizbang Collectibles. Way back when, if any of you old time remember. But 
um, you will sometimes see them out on the market. They've got a gold sticker on the front saying it was FX95. Ours had the, uh, well, it didn't have anything on the front, but it had the, I remember it was funny because we had to put stickers over the back side showing where the rest of the Stunticons that were pictured there. So we said BACON 94 exclusive, other Stunticons not available. I did it on just mailing labels, again, on my dot matrix printer. And I just slapped them over. They had to use two of them because it wasn't big enough to cover the whole square. Um, so ghetto, or are they? Yeah. Oh, well, you know, that's how everything starts somewhere. You know. um, but as far as, uh, Advertising lens. Um, I think the, most of the. It was in toy, or was it in toy shop, or it was in one of the? Was it Lenny's action figure news and toy? Review? Yeah, that was the one ad, one magazine ad that we got out there. For. Um, it was uh, I don't know if you remember. Well, it, it's, it's still it's still around. Now. Yeah, um, action figure news and toy review. And uh, I think we had also talked about it. Toys.transformers. Yeah, I don't. I don't even know if we put that up. That somebody, did. somebody put the information up. I think it was like a week or two before the show, yeah. because um, Rosemary um, could. She could not. She did not come to the first one because she just missed it. And she would have been another one of the um, perfect attendants. There's seven of us that have been to every single BotCon, and she would have been. She would have been the eighth one. She would have been another. Um, it was, you know, I, I, um, I remember very clearly getting the, since that was my freshman year in college, um, setting everything up for the summer of 94, getting a call from, uh, Jonathan saying, um, we have to come up with a name for this thing. Um, and, uh, I said, okay. And <laughs> he said, uh, well, what about, um, about BotCon, you know, Robot Convention, Autobot Decepticon. Okay, that sounds good. And it's still kicking around, you know. I mean, he, he came up with a name for it. And it's, you know, something very simple, but now that it's it's kind of a, kind of a well-known name, I suppose. I mean, people, now Brian calls his show JoeCon, the other show calls it JoeCon since it's, I don't know, it's and he had officially changed it? Not officially, but he called it Jokon. Okay. Like in the house, he calls it Jokon. Uh, just make sure he, does, he separates the syllables. <laughs> it's joke con. Joke on. So you don't right. want that. Joke on. Right. No, joke on, on. joke on. Um, I think for me, one of the one of the coolest things that I remember, especially from the from the first show, was when the um, the Hasbro guys um, came in, and if you look on your map, we were we were back in our little collection room area. You refer to your diagram. Refer to your diagram. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you will be with. <laughs> they they brought the whole line of uh, '95 stuff to show, um, and uh, one of the things they were trying to put them together because they brought them all in their suitcase on carry on on plane and um, it was the auto rollers they had pulled out the auto rollers and you know I mean like the auto transformation stuff and the light piping and all that stuff is you know kind of commonplace now but back then the auto rollers were I mean even though they were just blocky as all get out you flip the button and they, they transform and I just freaked out when I saw those guys transform for the first they rolled and pulled transform and I was like oh my god um, I remember that very clearly. I thought that was fabulous. And, you know, Dreadwing's missiles that shot, you know, because... Gatling gun. Gatling gun, because, you know, shooting missiles were, you know, they weren't allowed. I mean, they took, took that was a bad test, but, yeah, because of the whole, going way back, the uh, whole... Rocket fire broken Rocket fire Boba Fett and the whole Cylon thing from the bullet. No, that was our Galactica. Galactica, thank you. Back in, that's where some kid like either shot their eye out or choked on a missile or something, so all <coughs> shooting missiles had been killed. But I, 
guess they changed the regulations so if they were long enough, they could be fine. So I remember when um, Tom Bowen flipped that thing and shot all the missiles, everybody in the crowd just went nuts. It was awesome. Yeah. And uh, launching the uh, car out of the Grease Pit Racing Reef, yeah. which gosh, got canceled, but um, that was just one of those fun little concepts. Yeah. Yeah, that people were great. And one of, one of the things that I think got the most applause at that show, and is still proven, you know, true to this day, was that people were afraid that Dreadwing was going to be the last Transformer. That was going to be it, and then the line was canceled, because there were rumors maybe that it was going to be canceled, and they said, no, Transformers are going to live for a long time. Lots of applause. And it's, who would have known at that point that where, where things have gone? You know, with the you know the third movie that's now fourth highest grossing movie of all time with like one point one something billion dollars in gross, it's just crazy. Um, actually, before Bakan '94, I'm trying to think of some stuff that maybe some people don't know because um, I know there's a lot of our history that's that's out there. Um, we got together in the summer of 93 with Pete Sinclair, I think some of you guys know him, and um, Raksha, who was a fan um, early on. She doesn't come to the shows much anymore, but she's still a fan. I still see her on Facebook. If you remember her, maybe she used to have snakes. Mm -hmm. Avatar. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And Rick Hoffman, who lived in um, Chicago. I don't know where Rick is now. But... Um, we all decided to get together at the Kane County Toy Show in Chicago. Has anybody ever been to the Kane County Toy Show? Huge, gigantic toy show at the, at the Kane County Fairgrounds. There's, I mean, if you walk at a good power walking pace to get through all the buildings and stuff, you, you would have to probably go for about four and a half hours of walking straight through all the stuff. There's dolls, anyway, um, Star Wars stuff. Um, but we all decided to meet at that show just as a little gathering of local fans and we talked about maybe the potential of doing, you know, another local show and it was just fun to sit around and chat and, you know, hang out with other fans. I mean, we had, we had brought some stuff that we were selling. I was wearing the shirts too. Where were the shirts? I think we had the shirt by that point. Well, I mean, we had the shirt for... I think we did, we did it twice. There were two King Browns. <laughs> yeah. Because there was the one in October. October. Yeah. There's one in October. So one of them I was wearing a shirt. Sorry, we're dusting off the cover. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, because we did, it was it was one in June, and we did go back in October. That's where I put the t shirts on. Well, there are actually three. There are three. April, but we June, went, and we went over to the second one. Yeah. We were actually toying around with the idea of. Today, but I don't think anybody would have wanted any part of that. I think I just I can still fit. Yeah, no. <laughs> not, not here. Not, not here. A little um, too young on Yeah. Yeah. Better than a scarf. I, I, yeah, I could wear it as a scarf. Or I have a few transformer shirts that are a little young on me now. <laughs> well when I when I graduated high school, which is about that time, I was six ten and one ninety five. I was I was very very thin. So yeah, I can't, I can't do that. Um, let's see, as far as um, figuring out what we wanted to have at the show, um, we, uh, I think we just brainstormed and thought of you know, what possible areas of fan interest could people want to see there. So we thought about videos, and, Although one caveat to that, I think, I don't remember if Hasbro said anything about that because I, just, I don't know if they had many of their legal guidelines in place since it was such a new thing, but I can't remember if they said whether we could or could not show American stuff. I think that's why we, I think that's why we did not show any American stuff. Yeah, so that, so if you look at the program, you'll see that we had a bunch of Japanese things going, which I suppose worked out okay anyway just because a lot of people might not have seen that at that time yeah it was a lot of 
there was a lot of uh, trading going on with mailing lists of people and you know going back and forth and swapping old VHS copies and you know, we've got kicking around some boxes of that stuff yeah. too. And now that it's coming out of the media, it's kind of um, obsolete. But um, but it was still interesting, and um, you know we had uh, we knew that people were big into doing fan art, so we wanted to have some kind of an art contest and. Uh, we had our toy collection that we took down at the time, although all the carded stuff, we just took the cards of because when, I mean, we still had the cards for them, but the toys themselves were loose, so it would be a little bit awkward to display them. But that was, you were kind of in charge of you know, all of that, um, laying out. Laying out the collection room for all the, all the grids. We had it all, the, the, the box, Things were on um, cardboard, um, like here's tiered step things on each of the tables, and then the box things are the uh, carded, I guess just the cards, because they weren't actually on card and stuff, right? Um, they were on huge pegboards and um, held up with metal legs, metal legs. Just leaning up against the wall of the, the segment of the room that it was in. And, um, you spent days uh, on yeah, that. trying to put that stuff together to make it look right in chronological order around the side. And, um, and Tony Brito was gracious enough to also um, have let us display some of the is a Japanese stuff. And European stuff. Right? And European and stuff, that's correct. The Action Master is the Action Master leads a lot of the stuff from <laughs> Big Three. And uh, stuff that is what was at that time still pretty new, I suppose, or not not much seen in the US at that point. Um and uh, the uh, dealers, um, you know, we had to have dealers, um, which, looking back on it now, I, are there any people here who actually were at Baca 94? Okay. Um, you're talking about Mount Wasaki. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know, are any of you familiar with Rugby Starbase or Mount Wasaki? Oh, no. years ago. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I think he ended up he get out of it. Yeah, he, he sold it to Dwayne, Dwayne yeah. Quixie. He took over it. But at the beginning, Matt, he's from Buffalo, New York, and he had been stockpiling <coughs> cases and cases and cases of Transformers. Um, and he brought them to the show um, on the layout. Your first he's, diagram. He's the, <laughs> <laughs> he's the yellow section over here. Now what this doesn't reflect is the fact that his tables were double stacked. So he actually had, I think it was 11 tables. It was, it was actually um, in two, two, two U's two and they were double stacked. So he had 12 tables. Yeah. And um, That's interesting. Yeah, it was very interesting. And I mean, yeah. sealed cases of cars. I thought about yeah. cars. Mm -hmm. um, sealed, a sealed Fort Max in the case. Wow. You know, Comic boxes of filled with you know just carded aerial bots and everything, just and everything. You know, yeah. Action Master Optimus Prime, Four D, Action Master Megatron, Five D. I mean, it was just outrageous. And, and the prices on everything was still pre eBay prices, so it's like five dollars. High for, high for the. I, I thought the big cars were like sixty dollars, which was a little high for the time, but I think anybody. <laughs> I mean, it was, I went over there like five or six times just, you know, because we, we had all that stuff, but it was still just awesome to see it all in one place. I mean, that dude must have done some serious money that day. But it was, it was great, though. It was great. He had a great time, and um, we met, uh, met a lot of good friends over the course of that weekend. And, um, Fumihiko Akiyama, who missed not this past year, Bakan, but two Bakans ago. Um, he's a he's a good friend. He came all the way from Japan for that show, and uh, so it truly was an international. It truly was an internet unofficial international convention. That's right. Um, and the only reason he missed two years ago was because he was opening his dentistry business that weekend. So he felt really, really badly about missing Bakan knew that he was one of the people that had never missed. Um, but, uh, you know, as a little 
the side, and I was telling you what a great guy for me Hiko is. Um, when I had just gotten my master's degree at, uh, at IU, and um, the wind ensemble that I played in, we took a tour, tour of Japan. And the last, um, the last night we were in, in the area, we just happened to be around where um, uh, Fumihiko lives, and he took me out and around the various toy shops, and he showed me um, his apartment, showed me some things that nobody's ever seen before. Um, he's got some things that uh, he's never really wanted me to mention that I won't. But um, he's just like, yes, yes, yes. Um, um, things that I'm not sure that Hasbro even knows happened. Because I'm sure he got some stuff from Takara that Hasbro may not have even known about some um, G2 things that never shouldn't really, exist. Shouldn't exist, right? <laughs> they <shouldn't> exist. <laughs> no, um, they don't exist. They're right, they don't exist. Exactly. Our imaginations are running. Right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> there, there are there are pictures, but I don't even think any of them got out on the web. I, I have, for the record, I have petitioned for some of that stuff to come back in. You know, not to talk about the um, Brian stuff. I have petitioned for some of that stuff to try to make its way back in, but I don't think it's a really corporate. I don't know. I'm trying to think of anything else. You know, there's, I mean, you can, you can 
obviously past the first show, we could go on and on and on about various other other things. I mean, there's so many so many stories you know, we can tell um, about Bacon. I mean, you could write books about all of them. You know, not just Bacon, but you know, OTFCC and you know, Brian and stuff. I mean, and um, I just think it's great that um, there are more than uh, just you know the big show, more than just Bacon. I think it's great that also you know the smaller shows for more local things, regional regional shows. I think it's great that everybody has those or that those are around. Like, you know, I see them popping up like all the time um, because that's you know realistically that's where Bacon started. That's you know, and not, not that everything's going to pull up to what that ended up being, but I think there's a place for everything. Absolutely a place for anything. You know, if you get more than, you know, five or six Transformers fans in a, in a place, you can have a little get-together. And that's, you know, whether it's um, playtesting with the toys, or, <laughs> or um, you know, just watching videos, getting together to watch, you know, the cartoon or, you know, whatever you want to do. I mean, I think it's it's great that, you know, fans can do that. And I, I think, I think honestly, Transformers fans are some more normal fan base around without being too, um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to match into other fan bases, but there are some that are very, um, very, very opinionated and very divided. And you know what? I think I think Transformers fans are just like, you know what? We're still happy we've got stuff. Yeah. That's still happy. Being currently stuff. developed. That's being currently developed, right? Because other, other than uh, other than Clone Wars cartoons, <coughs> Star Wars now. Yeah, they make a lot of toys, right? Like the really young versions of Battleroids, those are awesome. But, they're the same thing as the originals. Right, right. I mean, are they are those more for collectors? Are those more for? Yes. The question I have for both of you is: We've heard, I've heard a lot of stories about the first convention, mm -hmm. but what turned it to get you to do like the second or third one? I mean, I know you have a lot of stories, but I've not heard much about how did you get to the well, second one. The thing is, we didn't actually do the second one. <clears throat> um, after we did the first one. Um, I don't remember if she came to us or we offered it. Uh, I, th I think a we got a couple of people interested <laughs> in doing the second convention. Huh. And um, since we had known Raksha, um, we're like, okay, there you go, have fun. So, yeah, so she, um, she basically, well, she asked some questions, um, just like logistical things and ideas for how to, uh, <clears throat> organized stuff. One thing that I think she caught on to that I didn't do was that he let people register for their own hotel rooms. <laughs> <clears throat> this is something I was telling Chad uh, a little earlier this morning, is that that's probably the one thing that I wish I hadn't done for the first show, and I didn't know any different, but when people sign up for a hotel room, they paid, you know, they sent me the money for the room rate itself, and I went down to the hotel, which was a half hour away in Fort Wayne, and register them with their name and address and everything, and paid the hotel tax out of my own pocket that they shut on. So that was, yeah, that didn't happen anymore after that. How about these more experience? Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, Raksha did the second show in Dayton, and um, she had uh, her own toy that she, she did the packaging for, and Hasbro supplied the, the car for uh, some sort of little GoBots. And, uh, yes, thank you. <clears throat> I think we ended up being uh, dealers then. I don't remember how. I think we just like got some people yeah, extra, extra extra stuff stuff I mean, around in the area and decided to sell it. Um, and then uh, after that show, um, Men in Black Collectibles, <coughs> excuse me, um, who had also been dealers at the '95 show, um, had expressed some interest in doing it. And uh, that was Dennis Barger and his crew. I can't remember. Guys, that were Dennis was the main main one, and 
so he ended up doing the show in Chicago. Again, we were there as dealers, uh, and you know, with the, the whole issues that happened to his stuff, I mean, were many of you at 96? I never, I never went to a convention until 2006, but I was in all the top toys and Transformers. And I remember reading stuff coming back from the show and reading what happened the after. Yeah, it was epic stuff. Um, well, he was having a 10th anniversary, or 10th birthday for the Transformers the movie. Um, yeah. And he had a cake and everything. The cake was there. Um, but, I don't know, the, the, I think the kitchen had closed by the time that they got around to um, showing the movie and getting ready for the cake. So they just, I can't remember, did they have any silverware at all? I think it was. No. It was just finger food with was food. <laughs> and water and water to drink. Yeah. Um, and the tape didn't work. Oh, for the the video yeah. tape. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't. I, I think I do remember that. I didn't remember that. I think I do remember that. Wow, that's um, awesome. The uh, the name tags were just hi, my name is, and then you like hang on. So we didn't didn't do anything like a lanyard or anything. So that was just, that was just a style point yeah. that we lost. Hey, speaking of lanyards, we had last year, we had the little things go like this, but we glued like uh, pins on the back, yeah, every one of them fell off. So we had name tags laying all over the floor. Uh, he still has his, so don't feel bad about name tags, John. Trust me. <laughs> it's, it's fun, but it's a headache. Well, and actually, uh, honestly, we didn't do name tags the first year. No, we, we, had, we, we just had a button. yellow button uh, with the metal press. button. And uh, yeah, it had, and there was a, a card that you got, and they were sequentially numbered, so you got a matching pair of it. We actually still have some um, I don't know how many of them match numbers. So. Um, like when you when you came in, you punched one card or one hole on the card, and then when you got your free toy, you punched the other hole on the card. So, so nobody actually had any name tags. Right? But. Uh, You'll occasionally see the buttons show up on eBay and they get this like disturbing amounts of money, like forty or fifty dollars for a button. Come on, this is garish yellow. Yeah, but the bright. It does have copyright Takara on the edge of it. Yeah, nineteen ninety four. Because we that was one thing we had to put on everything, even the the card that we had. Um, they made us. That was our legal with the parking experience. Oh, and, and for the record, to kind of bring it to 2004 when we did when we did our official last show, um, the oh, Action right. Master Breakdown, our official unofficial, our official unofficial last show. Right? Um, the Action Master Breakdown. We were very very careful about the use of Action Master and the G2 Decepticon symbol um, because Hasbro let the copyrights or the trademarks of those things go. They, they did not own them. So, fair game. And we ended up putting Action Master um, and, uh, and the Decepticon logo on the package because it was legal to, it was still legal to do. And we talked to, um, I talked to Paula Walsh at uh, um, Botcon in Rhode Island she said they Hasbro conveniently looked the other way on that stuff because they appreciated you know what we had done with Bach. I mean, they weren't going to bring the hammer down on us, even though they really didn't have any legal means to do so. They still really weren't going to bring the hammer down on us. So that was nice. That was nice. Yeah, that was that was nice. Thanks, Paul, for not bringing your bringing the legal team down. I don't think you told me. Oh yeah. <coughs> Uh, they just decided to sh shake it up, change it up a little bit. Hey, but seriously, which, is, which one would you rather have on your part? This or that? Well, that's more iconic. Right. Yeah. yeah. But this is I'm like, okay, yes, it sounds like his head, but who cares? Yeah. <laughs> Don't let Bashi hear you say that. Well, <laughs> no, I'm, realistically, those are, those are only around for, what, three years before they change the um, pieces up? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, sure. and even these, that, well, they kept the same design, the but machine they inverted the color scheme. Oh, right. Like that was 
and I, what, I the last question I have for you is, are you guys looking forward to the third year anniversary? Of trans uh, Transformers? Transformers, uh, and are you guys going to make an appearance, I guess it would be the 20th anniversary of MotCon, which would be you know that. 2014? Thank you for making me feel old. <laughs> 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 Yeah. I think yeah, I remember. I grew up with G1 too. Yeah. So that's my mind. No, I mean, I'll, obviously, I'm, I mean, I'm not going to miss BotCon unless there's like, you know, some crazy circumstance. But that would be the 20th. What? what? Deliver your first child or something like that. <laughs> then that would be my kids. Yeah. But no, that would that'd be. That's crazy to think about 20 years ago. Bacon, and Transformers, and 30 years of Transformers period. You know, going back to the days, I remember I went, ooh, we got two G2 figures this month, awesome. And then to all the madness that's going on now. All these young kids, they don't want to be sure. Back in my day. I have one. Uh, I noticed you said that there were uh, 300 of the breakdown for BotCon 94. But uh, I also uh, periodically online see like the, the orange hotspot, you know, like the other projector bots and things. Uh, were, were those just prototype samples that have leaked out or what? Yeah, they, hot, hot, oh, sorry. Well, they, they did some, um, I mean, just for their normal pre-production process, mm -hmm. when they did samples of stuff, they would do like one case or half a dozen or something. So. So that's why you would see some of the other, um, at least the, the card and protective box of Sunicon still coming out from other people that were not convention um, related stuff, but the, okay. the main bodies. Yeah, Hotspot Motormaster, as far as we have ever heard, there were none of those that have made it to package. None no, I've, I've never seen one package. I've never turned up. I mean, there, there have been, I mean, maybe in the order of over all the years, I've only ever seen maybe five of each. Um, I know one guy has one that's got, the, well, has a motor master that's got a unused G2 sticker sheet and all the weapons still on the sprues, and yeah, he got it from some crazy source. Um, but yeah, that's the most complete one I've ever seen. <coughs> I think usually on, on some of that weird canceled stuff, especially from G2, you'll find uh, like the, uh, the second series of the laser cycles, or the second series of the, the Heroes and Optimus and Megatron Heroes, you'll find there were like six of those. And that's about it. Yeah, um, they don't pop up. The so Megatron ATV. There were a few more of those. Over? Like yeah. a dozen? No, they were like probably 24 ish. Oh, a few cases. Okay. Um, no, I mean, no. The Green Beast Wars Ramulus. Which, yeah, yeah. As far as we can tell, that thing showed up like maybe at the Hasbro employee store or something. But same as the um, Blue Optimus Miner, and there was a rumor of a third different color of somebody that just. And there was also a rumor of those protective bots showing up at the Hasbro employee store too. But again, nothing could ever be confirmed with that stuff. What would you guys consider to be the worst Transformer figure ever? The worst Transformers figure ever. Uh, well, I guess it depends on what criteria you're using to define the worst. Just the, I mean, the what body you design, the color so scheme. I mean, what would you consider to be the overall, overall absolute biggest piece of crap? Because I see someone just like, hey, look, I got a book form. Get behind that. <laughs> yeah, Retrax isn't very That's a pretty solid. Neither, neither is Armada and IP. Um, no, not his, his big his big dude. Mm -hmm. Side 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 That's it. Yeah, that's it. I, I can name behind those. Yeah, those are pretty foul. Something <laughs> <laughs> like, you got to transform it. Like, hey, you transform it, put it together, and the arms fall off. You're like, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Kind of like uh, the Unicron prototype that Fox and Ivy said about yeah, all the pictures you see are his arms like this because it's falling out of the socket. <laughs> well, I think we got the cease and desist. So, uh... Thank you.